Hi there and welcome back. So before doing all the tutorials, addressing all the turbulence modeling in open phone, let's address the starting equations. I have no idea how many times I have done this, but I will try to to, to do it quick, to be brief. So what you see here are the governing equations of fluid dynamics with no models, okay? So we can call it the direct equation, the scale resolving, we're resolving all the scales. There is no modeling included here. There is no terminus modeling, no multi-phase or whatever model that you want to add. So to solve this, it is extremely expensive, requires very fine meshes, it needs to be 3D and requires a small time set because it's also intrinsically unsteady. So the idea of modeling, turbulence modeling in this case, is eliminate those small scales to make things affordable. Okay, so to demonstrate a little bit the workflow, let's use the incompressible Navier Stokes equations. Okay, so no energy. So these equations are the exact governing equations, DNS. Okay, so you want to call it like that. So let's say let's add models here. But to stress, if you get a super fine mesh, a very small time set, go into 3D, this is DNS. So be ready to wait a really, really long time and to have a very powerful computer. So basically what we do in terms of modeling, and let's talk about runs, who runs, less is also, it's a similar approach, okay, but different rules. But what we're going to show you, you can take it now that it's pretty much similar. We get the average equation. So you see here that now in our equations, we have the over bar and this prime. The over bar represents average quantities. That is what it can be done with, uh, can be solved with a rather coarse mesh and large time step or using state approximations in CFD. Prime are the very small fluctuations, since that are honest, intrinsically and steady, very small, probably very fast as well. So this is what we want to model, okay? To arrive to this equation, we use what is called the Reynolds decomposition. Also, we apply a few rules and, and some, mathema some mathematical uh, algebra in, be in between, okay? It is out of this code to show you how to do that, but in the video description, you, you, you have the link to, to a PDF where you can see this step, but it's not that difficult, okay? It's a very simple algebra and assumptions that we take. So basically, these equations now we can write it like this, okay? So look at that here, we have fluctuations. Now we introduce this, this term here, okay? This is a change of not notation, that's all. This is what we call the Reynolds stress uh, tensor. In all runs, runs, if you go to less, will be the subgregate scale tensor and so on. So basically, this tensor is this one, okay? And we have all the fluctuations here. Okay, you can have half also as you go uh, in com uh, compressible, you're going to have temperature fluctuations, scalars, and so on. So that that is what, whatever you see this prime, okay, is what we want to model because it is expensive, it is difficult. Okay, so some comments about this tensor, okay, I'm not going into details, just to mention that we multiply it by density by itself, is it by itself if you you which doesn't have units of the stress. So we multiply by rock to get the stress unit and look at that we divided by rho. So we get exactly the same equations, it's just algebra. So if we compare the exact equation DNS to the runs, you see that it's pretty much similar. We only have the over bar, average quantities, what can be solved, and then we want to model this. And this is this code, this is what we're doing in turbulence modeling, modeling this. We want to model this somehow. And that's what I'm going to introduce you now. So to do that, to go from these equations that we got, that we call exact runs or runs equation, exact in the sense that we haven't introduced uh, approximation jet, we go to this, okay? We arrive to what we call solvable equations, runs. So you go from here, we say that, okay, let me approximate the Reynolds stress tensor using this hypothesis, the Business hypothesis, okay? This is the, uh, the current in turbulence modeling. Have to say that there are different approaches, but this is the most widely diffused. It works very well, even it's used in, in less and so on. Okay. Can, a lot of people criticize this one, but it works. Okay. So we introduce this here, we do some algebra, and we get to these equations. Solvable equations, back what can be solved now. So 
Let's talk a bit about what we have here. Just to stress, we did so, just some algebra. Introduce business in the exact equations, do some algebra, and then grouping here and there, and you get this. So look at that. You have this term here, this new term here, that, <clears throat> that is the normal stresses. And look at that, we have K here. K is the thermal kinetic energy. Okay, that arise from that appro approximation. There are some assumptions. Why do we need to, to add this term? Okay, I'm not going into details. In the PDF, you will have a little bit description how, 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 from where it's coming. But to mention that later, we're going to talk about turbulence models. And if the turbulence model doesn't compute this quantity, okay, this doesn't appear. Or you can approximate it algebraically, or you can generate a another equation to compute it, but be careful about that. And then we get this term, which is the, we call here effective viscosity. And here you have turbulent viscosity. And the scope of turbulence modeling is just to compute this quantity. This is the extra quantity that we need to compute to correlate our solution to what, what should be the correct solution. Now, there are some observations, the models have been calibrated, so we need to add an extra there, extra agitation to the dynamics to get the right results. So basically, this is what turbulence modeling is doing. So how do we compute this quantity? You can get an idea that you can use algebraic methods or you can put a constant here that it will be completely wrong because this quantity is not constant or different combinations. So here the goal is to find a combination, a model to compute mu t, okay, the viscosity, turbulent viscosity in function its different quantities. It can be k, epsilon, omega, l, t, v, whatever. Okay, so many of these quantities will be familiar to you. And this is what we're doing: getting a combination from those quantities, compute mu t, in, insert that quantity here, and that's all. So <clears throat> to compute this. Uh, uh, approaches. There are many techniques, many methods, just to name me a few ones. So see the equation models, algebraic models that say that the, the, the limit of application, the, the, the number of applications for these methods are very limited. Okay. So the most well known is the Prandtl model. Okay. It works very well, but just one equation, one, one, one application. Then you have one equation, two equations, three, four, five equations, Reynolds stresses and so on. Okay. So basically this is what we're doing adding extra equations where you have coefficients, okay? And those coefficients are very important because the physics is contained there in those coefficients. They have been calibrated to get right results. And then using those extra quantities, get a combination and then compute your turbulence viscosity, that extra ingredient, okay? So a naive CF, CFD loop now for turbulence modeling, just to show you fast here. So you start from boundary and initial conditions, not only for velocity, pressure, temperature, also those turbulence quantities. So you need to give a good approximation, something physically realistic. Okay, so that is very important to know what you are doing, okay, to know that turbulence model. So you get those quantities, you start to crunch numbers, solve Ranz equations, okay, solvable equations, compute turbulence quantity, compute turbulent eddy viscosity, check convergence, and keep iterating. During this process, now there is some numerics, you need to choose discretization schemes, adjust on the relaxation factors, time step, correct gradients. You have seen that gradients are very important. We have it in those equations, add corrections to turbulence uh, models and so on. So there is a lot of stuff that you need to do. So roughly speaking, this is what we're doing. So some comments here that I'm not going into too many details, but just to stress that our goal is to approximate this one, to model this one. We use or most of the model or everything that you will have found in OpenFone is based in the boosting uh, uh, approximation. Okay, so this new variable mu t needs to compute it somehow. So it is computed by introducing new equations, new transport equations, and getting a combination of those variables to get that equation. So Torrance modeling, let's take a look at the overview, what we have. So here, what we have here first, let me uh, stress this one, that we go from top to bottom, okay, the computational cost increase. So this is what, where you see that the importance of turbulence modeling. You want low computational costs in runs who runs and see that DNS incredibly costly. And then we go from bottom to top and the mathematical complexity increase. DNS, pretty much you see that there is nothing. You just need to crunch numbers 
linear algebra, that, that's all, okay? It's all matrices. But you go here and you enter into runs, runs, and you will see, if you go into details, there is a lot of mathematics, how things are der derived. Also, you need to get coefficients and so on. So here, the mathematical complexity is very high, okay? But it's very affordable and very reliable if you know what you're doing. Okay, so that's all, okay? I hope you have now a good idea what we're doing. And at this point, let's talk about Let's move now to the next segment and let's talk about a uh, general form of turbulence models, okay? So basically you have seen that where we need to solve transport equation for those new quantities, okay? You have your solvable equations, let's find new equations to compute mu t. So basically since I'm doing using all uh, transport equation that takes this general for you. We have a transient term, the convective term, and then we have a production, dissipation, diffusion, and source term. And we already talked, you know, in the previous CFD cookie, also in the, in the playlist presentation, you know, that we have production, dissipation, they might be in equilibrium, then you have diffusion, how things are diffused, and so on. So these are these uh, terms, you know, this general form that, that we have. So production, it is the eddy factory, you know, where all those eddies are produced. Dissipation is the graveyard, everything dies here. And then you have diffusion is the transport, okay? How you transport things, how you redistribute that turbulence, okay? And source the extra forces. Okay, so as we look at different turbulence models, we haven't seen any of them, but for instance, if we talk about this, these random stress models, they are going to take this general four. So you talk about turbulent energy is going to take this four. So as you see, it's pretty much the same. But what is going to change is coefficients that you are going to have there. Okay. So the general four is this one. And very important that you have the production term here. And this is a very, very important term that we have in the equations, the transport equation of the turbulent quantity. Okay. So it is expressed in this way. You have now this product. Okay. So you have Reynolds stress tensor double dot product of the uh, velocity gradient and then well, a constant and this will give you, you know a scalar quantity so it's always computed like that like that it's very important so just to show you, you know that this is similar so in the Reynolds stress will take this four then you to look at the truncated energy takes this four Turbulent dissipation will take this this four, and then in the, the specific turbulent dissipation, this is for the k omega k x, you know, takes this four. So as you see, it's very similar, very important. We talk about that this is a way to validate turbulence models. Okay, so here you have a short description of some turbulence models. Probably you know all of this. You have used some of them. So our goal in turbulence model is also choose the less wrong model, or not the less wrong, the model that is uh most appropriate for, for what you are going to do so probably you always use the k omega sst fantastic model but maybe in some cases it's not the best choice probably will be the realizable k x you know and probably in some other cases the best choice will be spalar almaras okay so this one to show you know the, the most general ones on description there but the importance of knowing what you're doing okay you need to get an exposure you need to read the theory a little bit to know what boundary conditions will be the best one limitations when you can use this model and so on so when we start to look at the different models in open form always i will point out to a reference okay so just to show you to end this video uh to show you a turbulence model and how things are linked Okay, with the solvable equation. So let's talk about the K omega 1988. Okay, so probably the first practical K omega turbulence model. And look at that, I always give you no know, the specific version. And when I start to talk, I also give the references. Okay, these are the original references. You can go here and you can see what was implemented, how it was implemented, what are the recommended boundary conditions, initial conditions, coefficients, limitations, and so on. Okay, so here you have a brief description, description of this model. It's a good model, it is implemented in an open form. We're going to use it, but also over the years it has been you no. Know, uh, improve and there are different variations. You no, know, we have also Wilcox 98, Wilcox 2006, my favorite one. We have the Mentor 2003 K Omega SST, fantastic one as well. Okay, so you have many choices. There is a palette of models it's up to you, you now to choose one. One of the big advantage of these family of models is that they are Y plus insensitive. Okay, 
So later we talk about that, but this is probably why people use it most of the time. So basically in this family or in this specific version of the K omega, we introduce two extra equations, one, one from K, one for omega. K is the Turing kinetic energy, probably have a physical meaning. Omega is just an equation that we introduce, okay, with no physical meaning, just to uh, to, to get our total viscosity, okay? So this is a, a, a specific dissipation rate. So look at that. These two have some units. When you, you, when you do dimensional analysis, you will find that the total viscosity can be computed like this. And to stress something, dimensional analysis is very important in turbulence modeling, okay? It's quite funny that many of the turbulence models has been derived just using dimensional analysis. Then also, yeah, you need to compute coefficients and so on. But you see here, beta, beta star, all these are coefficients and all the physics, it is computed here in these coefficients. You change one of these uh, coefficients, you're going to see that the results change a lot. And this is the basic idea, okay? Introduce extra equations, then somehow compute your turbulent viscosity, introduce it back into your solar equations and you are done. Okay, so here you have description about all the coefficients. Look at that, we have also auxiliary relationships. So from omega, we can compute epsilon, the dissipation, that it will be dissipation of turnicating energy and you can compute it like this. You also can compute integral lesson scales. Okay, so you have the relationships there. So basically, general four, recall that production, dissipation, diffusion, okay? Always they take that four. Then, very important, knowing your theory, each model will have limitations and restrictions, okay? So in specific boundary conditions. So talking about here that this model can be well resolving, well modeling and so on. So these are a few comments there. How to choose boundary conditions. In this specific model, the author recommends to choose like this, omega at the wall, k at the wall. So these are the walls, you choose it like this. So you will see that omega usually will be a large value because it depends of y, which is the distance from the wall to the first health center. So if you are world resolving, you, really, you see easily that this is something large. This is recommended by the author, okay? Then free stream initial conditions. There are many ways. These are estimations, okay? These are some options how you can compute it. What is important that you need to give a physically realistic value. Don't throw in here a crazy value that here is you put K at the wall, negative value, it is going to diverge. So know a little bit what you're doing, your models, okay? So, and here just some guidelines how to do things. So this is basically what we're doing. Hopefully, I hope that now you have a rough idea, a better idea of what we're doing. So when we visit all models in open phone later, you are going to see that always I'm going to give you a specific reference that in this case, boundary conditions and guidelines and so on. Okay, so hopefully I'm going to see you in next videos. As I said, this will be a very, very long playlist. There is a lot to do. So thank you for your attention. See you next time. Bye.